So I saw Mark Morris had started a thread on sleep disorders a few weeks ago and I quite fancied doing it. I've always had a mixed relationship with sleep. As a kid, after watching Salem's Lot, it'd be the odd dream of Mr Barlow, the master, under my bed. As a teenager, some irregular sleep paralysis, nothing too heavy. On the plus side, I can go to sleep anywhere. I had no trouble getting to sleep in Iraq in 2007 as the rockets fell around me. I just pulled my bulletproof duvet over my head and I was in the land of Nod. Getting to sleep has never been a problem. It's staying asleep. I'll be out like a light and then I'm up at two in the morning and the rest of the night is restless broken sleep. So Mark's thread was really interesting to me. However, I just didn't have the time to do it. So I didn't do it. That's when the problems began. Talking in my sleep. That's how it started. Like the whimsical neo-psychedelia of the Rain Parade's second track on emergency third rail power trip. It started innocently enough. I know I'm talking in my sleep. Sleeping in my dreams. Dreaming on my feet. My wife noticed it first. She asked me one morning over buttered crumpets. Who's Mark Morris? I think I looked a bit embarrassed and then she said, Is there something you're not telling me? You were repeating the name over and over and over again in your sleep last night. Mark Morris. Mark Morris. Mark Morris. I continued to talk in my sleep, but then a few nights later things got weirder. I woke up in this record room, in this chair. I had no idea how I got here. It was the middle of the night. I was clammy with sweat. And I was hunched over, but strangely I was holding this album. This is the James Gang's seventh album, Miami, from 1974. And one song in particular was rushing through my head. It was side one, track four, Sleepwalker. Sleepwalker, you're just another shadow. Glide down the hall and wait. Just like I'd done into this room. But not only had I slept walked into the room, I'd set up the room to record a YouTube video. By this point, I was really, really confused. I hadn't really ever spoken in my sleep before. I hadn't, certainly hadn't slept walked before. But I wasn't overly alarmed because these are quite common sleep disorders. But then during the day, I became more and more compelled to listen to one song over and over and over again. And that was Lullaby by The Cure from their album Disintegration. And it made me think about why I wrote the song and how he was inspired to write it by a childhood story that his uncle used to tell him before bedtime. A story about a Spider-Man who would come and eat him at night. An absolutely nightmarish vision for a young child. And it made me think back to those lyrics. The lyrics of the song. On candy striped legs, the Spider-Man comes. Softly through the shadow of the evening sun. Stealing past the windows of the blissfully dead. Looking for the victim shivering in their bed. And that's when my night terrors began. Nightmarish visions like Dante's descent into hell. And Mark Morris was always at the centre of these visions. Like some kind of nightmarish Mr Kite leading his circus of horrors, Mark would be dressed in full Sergeant Pepper's regalia, sometimes dancing some kind of death waltz with sexy Sadie, other times wearing Eleanor Rigby's face, you know the face that she keeps in the jar by the door. One time, it was like some type of ghoulish Christmas scene where Mark grinning from ear to ear, was serving my family Christmas dinner, but instead of a roast turkey, he was carving a roasted rocky raccoon. Absolutely depraved, grotesque, horrific, nightmarish visions that I had to endure every night. But the worst, the worst, the worst nightmare was still to come. The opening bars of Why Don't We Do It in the Road played. 
And don't get me wrong, I hate paying my taxes as much as the next man. But what Mark was doing to that poor tax man in the middle of the note road, no government official should ever have to endure that type of punishment. And all the while, the nowhere man watched. It was absolutely chilling. And every nightmare ended in the same way. Why haven't you did my sleep thread yet? Mark would, would ask over and over again. But even more cryptically, after he'd asked why I hadn't taken part in his thread, he'd hand me a large adult nappy. A nappy? A large adult nappy, I think, in America. You call it a diaper. Yeah. Soon I was to find out exactly what those nightmarish visions were all about and why Mark would pass me an adult nappy at the end of each nightmarish ordeal. And it made me think of this song by indie duo Wet Leg. The song is Wet Dream. Upbeat, fun, energetic. A song that was written by singer-songwriter Rian Teasdale about a relationship that had broken up and after the breakup her ex-boyfriend would send her text messages and phone her and recount um, wet dreams that he had about Rianne. I said an energetic and fun song but there was nothing energetic or fun about my wet dreams four, five, six times a night. The need for the nappy was obvious. I was drained in every sense of the word. By this time I was both a physical and, and an emotional wreck. Mark continued to invade my dreams nightly, taunting me. I was still speaking in my sleep, weird gibberish. I was sleepwalking, finding myself waking up in different parts of the house, most often in the record room ready to make a YouTube video. Yeah, it was it was trying on my relationship with my wife and the, the rest of the family. And I knew at that point that I owed Mark Morris some type of sleep debt, some type of sleep debt that I didn't think I was capable of pay, um, paying back. And that's when I turned to The Strokes for help. This is from their third album, First Impressions of Earth, and the song is Fear of Sleep. And that's exactly why I had developed. Now, the Strokes song is standard Strokes fair, upbeat and energetic guitars, but Julian Casablancas, the singer, repeats the same mantra over and over and over again. Fear of sleep, fear of sleep, fear of sleep, fear of sleep. And I think it's a song that's written about um, the main protagonist, potentially Julian, who enjoys partying and going out so much that Sleep's no longer an option because there's a, another refrain later on in the song where he sings, you're no fun, you're no fun, you're no fun, you're no fun. That would be potentially aimed at those that were trying to curtail his wild partying late night antics. But for me, this ordeal was no party. Then Mark posted his sleep deprivation update thread. It looked innocent enough, it was an innocent enough video where Mark showed this absolutely beautiful gift. You know, it was the sweetest gift that I'd ever seen that his daughter had sent him. It was a beautifully designed yellow submarine record. But I think that part was just a ruse. It was a ruse to reel in my tired and broken mind. And then Mark started with his passive aggressive pleas to jump on the sleep deprivation thread and previous threads and his soft gaze it seemed to go right through my computer screen almost see right into my soul a wolf in sheep's clothing a puppet master of dreams controlling my very thoughts dream of reality mark wasn't going away waking in fright is often just the beginning of the nightmare i'd started listening to jack white's fear of the dawn and the track esophobia now, esophobia literally means the fear of the dawn, the fear of daylight. And people who suffer from this condition have an ir irrational fear of daylight hours, so they quite often turn day into night. 
to stay up through the night to avoid being around in the daylight. The track is really dubby. It's a lot more experimental than you'd normally hear from Jack White. It's recorded digitally rather than the analogue methods that he would normally use to record. So it's quite a refreshing change to listen to him put out something like this. But you know, it really, really hit home because that's where I was living a vampiric existence where I stayed up through the night. My days got shorter and shorter. My nights got longer and longer. And that's me now. I've almost given up on trying to sleep. I find ways to occupy myself through the night. And my therapist has been monitoring my multiple sleep disorders over the last few weeks and dubbed them Somnium Morris Syndrome. And hopefully I'll find some respite from my condition. I just want to be able to sleep and sleep safely. Good night.